The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of Paltalk.com, AVM software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of Peltalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users on demand on iTunes and on YouTube and on my blog, GaryBaumgarten.com, where you're encouraged to post your comments, whether you agree with yours truly or not. No retribution. And thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, we're syndicated to 12 million additional households. I am your host, Gary Baumgarten. Welcome to the show. In one moment, we're going to talk about uh, nuclear proliferation and uh, the efforts to disarm uh, those of us who are overly armed with nuclear weapons, and that includes the United States. What? The United States? Uh, are we only concerned with other countries? No, we should be concerned about how much nuclear arms are in our arsenal as well. Your arsenal, if you are uh, joining us from a country that um, is uh, one of the members of that uh, very small but growing club of nations that have or are attempting to acquire nuclear weapons. We're going to get to that in just a second, but before we get to uh, Lieutenant General Robert Gard, who is our great guest today, uh, I want to take a moment to return to Australia, where now uh, the body count from the wildfires, some of them uh, deliberately set, is at 181, 80 missing. Uh, Jenny in Australia, I'm reading uh, in the uh, news media uh, coming from Australia that they anticipate that uh, before this is all, all over, 200 or more people will be dead. What is the latest from your neck of the woods? Hi, Gary. Yes, the figures I heard this morning on the local TV are 181 dead and the coroner has set up a temporary morgue in Melbourne and expecting 300. They, um, police, not they, are going into a place called Marysville this morning. It was one of the worst affected areas and the rubble hasn't been sifted through yet, so you can expect numbers to be a lot higher by the end of the day. Now, I live approximately an hour north of the Beechworth fires. This morning here, it's a lot cooler. There is only a breeze instead of a wind. Um, what can you say? The army has been in over the last two days and bulldozed and what they call it is a blade. They have bulldozed three blade widths around the fires and they're trying to contain them. But bearing in mind if the if the fires make the ridges and the wind picks up, the next ridge will be under am ember attack and it will all start off again. Um, Fundraising, a lot has been donated so far to the Red Cross here in Australia from corporations, from banks, from other countries. Firefighters have been flown in from New Zealand. Also, chainsaw experts from Tasmania have been flown up. A lot of roads are inaccessible due to burning and smouldering trees still on the roads. They've all got to come down before clean-up crews can go in. What else was there? A football match has been transferred from Darwin to Melbourne over the weekend. Yes, Australia is still burning. There's more than 11 out-of-control fires at the moment. Weather conditions will heat up again towards the weekend. That is also another danger that we're facing. Now, the Prime Minister and the Premier of Victoria were in the relief camps on 
Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, I think it was, they have set up key people to do different tasks. They have given the the people that are in those camps, our social security system is called Centrelink. Centrelink has come in and taken names. They have given people a thousand dollars each to start them off to start getting some clothes. A lot of clothing has been donated. The army has been in. They've set up what we're calling a tent city. People are no longer sleeping in their cars. They have <coughs> I know it's basic, a tent and like a stretcher to sleep on. Then they realised that there were no pillows for anybody. One of the big pillow companies here loaded up a truck with 500 pillows, got them down to them. What the Red Cross has been calling for is for personal items, your toiletries, your ladies' health products, that sort of thing. They're all coming in. Having said that Centrelink's in, the Premier said last night that they've had people in from the insurance companies so that the the people that know that have lost their houses, cars and possessions can start getting the paperwork for their insurance claim started. So instead of people having to go and find their insurance companies, they're bringing them into the relief camps. I saw on the news last night the volunteer ladies within the township of the Red Cross, they had rooms full of clothing, blankets, etc. But they're not only distributing donations, they had huge barbecues set up and as the firefighters were coming in from their shift, they were also feeding all of those hundreds of men. The the task that they've undertaken is just absolutely mammoth. And still bear in mind that these fires are still going. They're dotted all over Victoria. Um, town meetings are being held in schools and also in local halls, preparing people, getting people out, getting their fire plans set. Um, Farmers that have how many acres, I've got no idea. Go to some of the websites and you... We just have vast amounts of bush here and it's burnt out. Um, the farmers have all been pumping out of the rivers, filling up their tanks, doing massive clean-ups around their houses, getting their gutterings cleared. What you do is you, you put tennis balls in old tea towels or rags. You block your gutters and you fill all your gutters up with waters. The organisation now to try and keep those houses that are still standing and the fires are still moving from one town to another and it's trying to keep the next town